Hello and welcome to episode 74 of Random Encounter, the RPG Fan Podcast. I'm your host, Robert Simon, Pale Robbie on the boards. Joining me today, we have the man with a giant freaking tattoo on his arm. That's me. It's a new one, too. It's not my old one. It's uh, Zodiac from FF12, his glyph. Anyway, I'm Derek Hemesburg and Embryon on the boards. That thing looks nuts, dude. It's pretty <laughs> sick. I'm not going to lie. I'm really happy with it. I'm a big fan of Ivelisse related things. I mean, yep. I, 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 especially on my favorite people. So, <laughs> Aw, Steven. Just, just Sazen. How I'd be much? Happy if you had a thing on you, I don't know. What that <laughs> you guys means. are hijacking what? already. Oh, my let's God. Not, what? Let's not come into that. What? So, how much did it hurt? Uh, a good amount. Uh, hurt more than my other two. I have a tattoo on my other arm and one on my leg and uh it was a six hour session and i sat through the whole thing all at once so the guy was like you're pretty hardcore and i was like mm, i don't know i just sat there i, I watched mall rats uh ghostbusters one and iron man while i was having it done so that was pretty sweet why is that kid on the escalator, on the escalator. Yeah, so oh. I had small rats since I was a teenager, so that was pretty awesome. It's not anyway. a sailboat, it's a schooner. <laughs> it's cool. It sailboat. hurt, but it looks good, so I'm fine with it. Oh, man. And then you guys also got a chance to hear Stephen Myrink. He's here, ladies and gentlemen. He is indeed, and he's still curious that you're still listening. But thank you. Welcome back, Stephen. You've been gone for a long time. You were in, uh, you're on the East Coast doing East Coasty things with Magfest. I, I was, I was in Miami, like you know, burn noticing it. Up. I wasn't in Miami. I went to Maryland for Magfest. It was amazing. Everybody should go. And next year, I'm sure many of you will. But yes, go to Magfest and listen to Final Stage. They're awesome. Oh, I'm so sad I didn't get to go. It, I was the whole time. I was like, I want to be there. Uh. Let me put, let me put it to you this way. I don't want to take up too much of our time. I never dance at concerts. I dance. So much at one of the shows that I was drenched in sweat and Mike and my friends practically had to carry me back to the room where I passed out basically on the floor. Oh, I dance. You, so you, weren't, you weren't inebriated at all, I'm assuming, correct? Uh, thanks to Bradley, our wonderful videographer, and his lovely wife, Sarah, I was very inebriated. Most <laughs> of the nights I was there. And uh, <laughs> let, me right. put, let me put it to this way, RPG fans. You haven't lived until a rock band has played Jesters of the Moon from Final Fantasy IX and you've moshed to it, okay? Oh. You haven't lived until you've done that. And I did that. So, everybody, go to MAGFest. Okay. You convinced okay. me. All right, all right. So, uh, we kind of did the uh, the whole year is over. 2013 is done away and gone. 2014 is here, ready to disappoint and make us all angry, as is probably the case. God, there's so much negativity online the past couple days. Like, we're looking at Game of the Year articles and people being like, I can't believe so-and-so liked that game. I'm just like, good lord. Like, what the... Like, people you know, got angry over GameSpot giving a Link Between Worlds Game of the Year. You know what, though? I... I agree that the negativity is lame, but I think it's also indicative of a really awesome thing, which is that there is such last year, and I'm I'm going to be you know sweeping in this statement, but last year there was such a variety of stuff that came out. It's natural that someone's going to look at someone's award and go, "How could you give that an award?" Because look at our award. People were like, "RPG fan gave say, game of the year to an MMO," and we're like, "Yeah, because we loved it." I, Gamespot I, I, Gamespot says the same thing. They're like, "Sorry, I mean to interrupt you." Right. GameSpot gave their game of the year to a handheld game, and it was an amazing handheld game. So we had such a variety of stuff last year that it's like, I, I can't understand how you can be a fan of what we do and, like, the stuff we play and not be excited about last year because it was a freaking zoo. Mm -hmm. I'd say the only department that it really lacked in was Western RPGs, which I think we'll discuss later. But overall, it was a really strong year. Like you said, there were so many games to consider, and, like, we had we had some pretty strong contenders for all of our categories as we were doing our game of the year stuff so it's like and you know and we're just an rpg site so there was a lot of variety within rpgs even and then elsewhere there was so much it was just like and also last of us is an amazing game and uh, i don't care what anybody says it deserves the awards but what? yeah uh last of us was so good we made up a new award to give it an rpg fan which is best we sure known did RPG. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it was a phenomenal game. I think I've actually warmed up more to it playing it uh, a few times. But I, I will say we, we kind of talked a little bit in the pre-show warm-up. And, you know, looking back on some of the releases, I wasn't as excited about RPGs this year. And Derek pointed out why I don't think that there were 
very many Western RPGs, like big Western RPGs. We didn't get a new Dragon Age. We didn't even get an announcement of Fallout 4. It, it, it was kind of like a... So for guys like me that are maybe a little bit more interested in those kinds of RPGs, we didn't really get what we wanted. So that was kind of a, a little bit of a bummer, but what stood up were like a lot of indie titles. A lot of indie titles kind of carried the torch and a lot of different ideas that are going on in that space. Yeah, I agree. Uh, last year was the year I came around because I was always like, eh, indie games, they're me. And then I realized that so many of the games I've been playing have been indie games, and obviously way late to the party because there have been good ones for a while. But, uh, I mean, there's that that's kind of the space that's really exciting. And it's I think the variety in indie games is pushing, in some cases, AAA games to be more creative too. Like, you look at, um, look at Ubisoft with Child of Light. I mean, that's not technically triple a but they're a triple a studio and i'm sure they're dumping dollar bills into it but i think the success of like kickstarter and smaller games and 2d games and indie games has made them say yeah let's spend some money on child of light it's a 2d yeah. turn-based rpg and i think yeah, that's I mean, awesome i can guarantee you they wouldn't have made that game if if other similar games hadn't been made already and if that the indie movement hadn't gotten so strong then they wouldn't have even considered something like that yeah it's it's exciting i like i always say we I, Without being prescriptive, we live in an exciting time where a lot of crazy stuff can come out that you undoubtedly haven't heard of. Yeah, like, I love that I can wake up on any given day and read gaming news uh, about, like, this new Kickstarter was launched about something that looks amazing. Like, I just saw one, like, an hour ago for Rain World. Have you seen oh, that? Oh, yeah, that looks super cool, it, yeah. It, I saw it, like, an hour art, ago, too. Yeah, pixel art game about a uh, cat slug in a desolate, post-apocalyptic world. And I freaking love pixel art, so... Um, it, it looks, it's similar in style to Hyper Light Drifter, just in terms of the very fluid animation with pixels. So, but yeah, I just, I think it's so cool that the indie scene is booming and that anybody can pretty much just make a game and say, yeah, hey, I have these ideas and uh, I have a platform that I can present them on and people will listen. And then we have all of these cool things coming out. So it really has never been a better time to be somebody that's interested in video games because options are everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's pretty absurd. Like, and even AAA, like, Last year was great if you like AAA stuff, and I think uh, I think AAA is being pushed to be more creative now because people expect a certain degree of like, oh, your game can't just be another shooter anymore. Like I think people have fatigued of that, and I think uh, we're going to see more of that this year. Yeah, I hope so. Well, I'm personally I'm I'm tired of first person shooters anyway. So if they're going to continue to be first person shooters, they really need to do something different. Like. Borderlands is great. Um, like, be fun? That would be, yeah, that would be nice. That, that would be a good step in the right direction. <laughs> I, I will say, off topic, I played Killzone Lib, or whatever the heck the Killzone on PS4 is, and I actually liked it. Not a great game, but a fun game. Yeah, well, I mean, I kind of want to try the uh, PS4 one, I, just to try it, but it's not the kind of game that I can justify yeah, I, buying just because shooters tend to make me sick after, like, they give me headaches. I've said that a million times, yeah. probably, but... I would say it's not worth 60 bucks because it's brief, but if somebody has it or you can borrow it and you sit down, it's a fun showcase for PS4, and it's never bad. It's just, you know, it, it runs, like, from a it's solid game. 7 to an 8 or a 9. But it's RPGs. Yes, RPGs. Rob, do you so, like RPGs? I, I'm a fan of RPGs. Uh, and Derek, RPGs. Uh, Derek, you got addicted to one RPG during uh, the holidays, didn't you? I did. I did. It's one that's a little bit outside of my normal wheelhouse, but I ended up um, just completely sinking my life into Rogue Legacy. I got it yes. as a... No, I didn't get... Um, it's funny, my friend uh, Steven, you know Greg. Greg Delmage. shout out to Greg. Uh, yeah, thanks for listening to our shows, Greg. Yeah, You're, you're lovely. Okay. He's, uh, he was actually going to buy it for me, I guess, like on the day that I bought it. It was on Steam sale. So I bought it. And then uh, about an hour later, he said, well, I bought that for you, but now I can't gift it to you. So enjoy it anyway, which was funny. So I was I was destined <laughs> to play it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I absolutely love 2D Castlevania games, uh, including Ooh, the old dozens. ones as well as the, the, the Metroidvania style ones that have the RPG elements. So, if you don't, check your brain. Yeah, there's something wrong with you if you don't. So... Rogue Legacy is basically a Castlevania game with roguelike elements that has a different art style. I, I think if a game like Rogue Legacy came out with a, a, an art style more akin to Castlevania, I'd probably just die happy. But that game is so freaking addictive because everything you do is rewarding. And every time you die, you want to you're like, OK, well, unless you have a really, really miserable run, it's like I have some gold. So I really want to spend it on some upgrades. And now I want to see what those upgrades do for me as I go into the next run. 
So, oh my god, that that game absolutely su- for probably like five days, I just didn't do anything else. When yeah, I uh, you, you know, I think we're a little late to the party because when that game came out, all the sites were like, oh, addicted. And I, you know, I got it and loved it. And when I went home to visit my family, my little brother, in sort of in order, I was like, hey, play Wolf Among Us. He beat it, loved it. And then I go, I was playing Rogue Legacy. He goes, what's that? And I'm like, it's Rogue Legacy. He goes, it looks like Castlevania. So I let him play it on my Steam account, and then he bought it like five seconds later, and that's all we played other than Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, but everyone knows we love that at RPG Fan. And uh, Rogue Legacy is just utterly compelling because it the controls are tight. It, it has the most important things for that genre. Controls are tight, playing is rewarding, and it's challenging. And in my opinion, those are the three most important things when you have a game of that style. And it's just, ugh. Yeah, Every moment game, is delightful and addictive. It beats the crap out of you too, but you keep coming back for more. I, I got I got frustrated, not maybe not as often as I was excited, but every couple of runs I would die some horrible death or just have some miserable, stupid accident happen. But you'd have I, you'd, you'd have like vertigo better. and color blindness and be like, well, oh. <laughs> Yeah. Could be worse, I guess. yeah, that kind of breaks the whole game. I mean, I, I, I like Rogue Legacy a lot. I think that those kind of like, you know, the the being big or uh, or having dyslexia and things like that. I sometimes that was cute and funny, but at some point, maybe about like the six hour mark in the game, as I was getting close to the end, I kind of wanted that stuff to stop. And yeah, I kind and I kind of just wanted to beat the game at that point, and I was getting a little frustrated with yeah. it. And as you open up more and more character classes that could end up hindering you because you could end up being like, well, wait a minute, I don't really like this certain character class. I haven't yeah. really built my, my legacy around that. But now every once in a while, I'm going to get that character class and maybe no other good options. So that That's one of those little metagame things that I think... I, I know Steven didn't, wasn't bothered by it because nothing bothers him, but well, no, that, no, no, that got no, on no. my nerves a little bit. I, uh, I, I agree with you that it's it can be frustrating, but I think that's the kind of game that invites you to go back and play it and game it. Like like Final Fantasy Tactics. It wants you to go back and game the system. And with it being as random as it is, that's sort of the occupational hazard of having a game that's procedurally generated like that. But also it's like, yeah, you know, the first time I played, it was frustrating. I had 5,000 classes that sucked. But then you know when you play again, you know, don't unlock that class. You know, level up. You, you know what you want to level up. So you can sort of game the system to your to your liking that's, that's true doing extent. although i just agree though that i i had the exact same uh, observation as i was playing i was like i don't want assassins and i don't want mages because they suck all right I'm, want... I'm not gonna lie i think assassins are awesome and i think spell thieves are awesome but we can all agree that no, arc, arc mages amazing. let's all agree that arc mages are terrible yeah they're just bad but yeah spell spell swords or whatever they're called are fantastic but then uh those guys and ninjas i i think the dragon sucks too but Anyway, that's not relevant, I guess. It's uh, if you enjoy action RPGs, you should probably buy Rogue Legacy. It's dirt cheap. It goes on sale every thirty seconds, and uh, I I see no reason why you shouldn't own it. It's a great game, and yeah, it's 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 funny. It'll make you laugh, even at your own like mistakes. You'll laugh sometimes. You're like, oh god. I would also agree. I would also rather suggest that even if it seems like the kind of game that you would not normally want to try, like if the idea of of Rogue Likes. Uh, is repugnant to you you don't like the idea of having to restart or be level one or whatever it's still really accessible and addictive um it it doesn't i mean it it can be hard but it doesn't ever feel so punishing that you're like screw this i just lost a bunch of time uh it just because i'm i'm kind of averse to roguelikes i i don't hate them or anything but if there's nothing if there's no uh progression system where i can retain something from run to run, then I get really, really irritated. Like, I hate games where I have to start level one every single time, and there's nothing I can do to make myself stronger uh, between runs. So if, if that's the kind of thing that bothers you as well, I would still say to try Rogue Legacy. It's it's a really good game. Yeah, they call it a Rogue Light for a reason. It, it takes elements of Rogue Likes, but the persistent progression makes it feel, you know, like, like you're never just wasting your time. Like, you lose some of that, I'm purely basing this on my awesome skill level, of a roguelike but also it's it, it's a little bit more compelling in terms of progression yes sir it's good yeah. I, I i was a really big fan of it i enjoyed it um and i i think it's definitely a sign that we all kind of got addicted to it in our own little way and it's a game that once it gets its hooks into you you're not going to do anything else for a couple of days like waking up in the morning pot of coffee rogue legacy and yeah, it was exactly yeah 
Yeah. Actually, speaking of pot of coffee, I just bought a coffee maker, so everyone celebrate for me. You're like an official graduate student now, That's Steve. Good. I'm very proud of you. I don't know how you just got one and you're in graduate school. Like, well, I would, because I, I because I was enjoying, you know, spending all of my money buying four dollar lattes at Starbucks, but now I'm I want I want coffee at home. That certainly is want, its own joy, but I want to entertain myself with coffee yeah. at my place. For okay, free. that sounds good. Sounds like a party to me, right? So you know what else we've all been playing? Mm. Final Fantasy first... 14. Yes, but the Bravely Default demo. Ah, yes, we have indeed been playing. We have, and there's a lot of um, varying uh, opinions. So yes. uh, I, have, I have a quick question, totally unrelated to gameplay. In the U.S., is the game still called Bravely Default Flying Fairy, or is it just Bravely Default? I think it's, it's just, just Bravely, Bravely Default. Yep, just Bravely okay. Default. Uh, I, I mean, I, I understand exactly why they did that in the U.S., because everyone's like, Flying Fairy? Pfft, I don't like fairies. Yeah. I played Zelda. People are uh, dumb. So. Well, I mean, with, with their memories of fairies being Navi, I suppose I can appreciate that, but... That's what you think of immediately? Well, I mean, I didn't even play Ocarina of Time, and I know how annoying Navi is, so... Oh, she, yeah, she's the worst. I mean, she doesn't. Mean, she means well. So she's no tattle or tail for sure. I gotta play Majora's Mask. I was convinced yeah, that see, game sounds amazing over the drop over that my break. Yo, that game. Not, that game is oppressive. But anyway, so the demo, we we've all played it. Um, I sunk about I don't know five hours into it, five six hours. Stephen, how long did you play it? I may or may not have ten hours, and I may or may not Ooh. be actually checking it right now. I before we get into our the crux of our the the the, the taste. Wow. Before we get into the meat of our discussion, I love the demo uh, for reasons that I think a lot of people actually don't like the demo, but I, I won't get too much into that now. But yeah, I put like, I have, I think, at least 10 hours on it. I think between the three of us, we actually have a really good spread of opinions on this demo. I would say that Steven leans the most positive, Rob leans the most negative, and I'm really squarely in the middle in that I I like the demo, but I also think it's a very bad demo, which probably sounds like uh i'm insane because that would say it doesn't align with my tastes but i think that it the the demo does a really poor job of showing what kind of game bravely default is to people who don't know anything about it for people like us who play a billion rpgs and are well informed and we do our research we know what we're getting into when we play that kind of demo but i think that it throws you in with so many options and so little explanation and and yes, it does. Yes, it absolutely does say this is very different from the regular game. You are just going to be doing fetch quests. But people are dumb and they will they'll be like, oh, well, I, the whole game is going to be like this. I don't want to play this game, meh, peh, peh. which See, I'm not I... saying is any fault of the game whatsoever. I'm just saying that I guess from a development standpoint, I feel like they kind of missed something there they kind of dropped the ball on making it an accessible demo that makes people want to buy the game i'm gonna i'm gonna jump in real quick no 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 no. no I'm, gonna go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm gonna jump in real quick before steven gets in there because I, I know the argument steven's gonna make because we've been working <laughs> with him for so long and what steven's gonna I say <laughs> well what steven's gonna say is well haven't we been complaining a lot about games that hold your hand too much and really don't let you do this than oh, that now you're cheating because i said that before the show i know so it's almost like i'm it, it, it's it's like it came to me in a vision um and Picture my head stop Picture it this. stop <laughs> it <laughs> and so i get that point but i'm kind of I, I lean more strongly than derek when i picked up this demo you're immediately thrust into like, okay, you're in this world. These are your party members. You just got a task from like a monarchy, from a king. And I was like, oh, okay. And then the game's like, here's this Farmville side quest thing that you can do to like assign people. Wait, what? Okay, so I, I need to street pass with people now. Okay, now go to the town and you can change jobs and we're not going to tell you what any of the jobs do or what's special about the jobs. Okay, now go out into the world and start questing. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. All right. Who are these party members? Like, I was just like, w uh, you just hit me with like eight things in a row. Right. He... And I, I, the example I gave to Steven was, if the, I drop you into the middle of Deus Ex and I don't explain to you what your superpowers are, you're going to be stumbling and fumbling and you're not really going to be having fun because you haven't had a couple of hours for the game to but... tell you how to interact with it. And I just feel that this game just throwing you into the middle of this it was like uh, uh, can we all agree that the farmville stuff was probably not the first thing that this game needed to show you uh yes, I, I, but... I will agree that it probably should have said hey this is what this does first but i will say vis-a-vis -vis your deus ex reference deus ex also 
starts like if you had a demo that started you out with a bunch of your powers, yeah. Bravely Default doesn't start you out with a bunch of your powers. It starts you out at level one and says, here are the potential powers you could have. And as and again, I I don't necessarily agree that you should pander everything to the lowest common denominator, but I feel like this demo was aimed at people who know what they're getting into at Bravely Default. Like people who wanted this game have been vocal about it for a while. They know what Bravely Default is. It's Final Fantasy V with graphics by the guy from Final Fantasy Tactics with, you know, awesome music by some crazy Japanese guy. And, like, I got into it and I said, all right, cool. I'm well aware of what a Valkyrie does. I know what spear people do in Final Fantasy. I know what a black mage is. I didn't need them to explain that to me. Uh, um, I, didn't, I wouldn't say that I needed them to explain those sorts of things. But, see, I, I agree with you and disagree at the same time. Wow, I'm contradictory today. And or, uh, I'm a people pleaser. What can I say? Real quick before you say that, I also wanted to say that as an RPG demo, the Final Fantasy VIII demo back in the day throws you into Dalit and is like, yeah, here's a bunch of stuff that doesn't make sense. And I loved it. But the Bravely Default demo says, here's all the gameplay that you're going to be able to try out. We're not going to spoil any of the story for you. And I like that because now when I go into the game, it's not like, oh, God, I got to play the first chapter again. And I know everything that happens there. I guess so, but th the fact that they went out of their way to create a demo that has content that differs completely from the game also means that they could have created a small... Because they, they marketed this demo, well, what little marketing they did, when they when they announced this demo via Nintendo Direct and elsewhere, they explained that it would be a quote-unquote side story that has content that's not in the full game, and that made it sound like a neat side quest that actually had some kind of narrative uh, impact, like something cool that might be, you know, a thing that you could play the full game and be like, oh... In the, the demo side quest, they did this and this, and they didn't fully explain that in the game. So now I understand. But instead, it wasn't actually a side story as much as it was just like, here is some, here are some very basic quests with like a line of text to explain what it is. But what I was going to say earlier was not that I think... Uh, I, I agree with you because they do give you the option for all the jobs. And all the jobs have to be leveled up, so it's not like they're at max level and you have a billion abilities to choose from and blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, I was like, okay, I've played... I, crap ton of rpgs i understand how this works i don't need it to be explained to me but i have eight jobs available to me right away and i made a party that i thought would be effective like you know i made like a knight white mage black mage and blade master or something and i equipped them and i noticed that everybody had weapon proficiency ranks that were kind of i could infer obviously that having a higher proficiency would make it stronger but uh, when I was using Optimize, it kept equipping them with different stuff and blah, blah, blah. So I went out into the field and I was like, I was just getting stomped because even though I thought I had an effective party setup, things are a little bit different in the game because you have the whole Brave and Default system. And I just sort of felt like, like I wish it would have been a little bit more structured where they would have said, okay, here's the beginning of the demo. We're going to start you with just Knight, White Mage, Black Mage. And then you beat the first boss and then it says, okay, now we're going to give you two more jobs so you can experiment with those. But instead, it just kind of was like, here's everything at once, and then go fight all the guys. And, and See, I, I appreciate the point you're making, but I, I have to disagree again. Because Final Fantasy Tactics never gave you that hand-holding, and we always talk about that game as being incredible and amazing, because you could just go your own way. And I don't think Bravely Default requires you to have a certain party composition. The fact is, the beginning of the demo is hard as balls, no matter what classes you have. Because my party just rocks everything now. But when I started, I had a black mage with no magic. I had a white mage with no magic. I had a Valkyrie with a spear, which was great because I saw the S rank. And I said, okay, S rank, obviously, I should equip her with this. And my knight was like, you know, I'm a knight. I'm average at everything. And I can protect people. Uh, so I got rocked a lot. But then you win a few battles, you gain some levels, and very rapidly you get powerful. And that's how it is in Final Fantasy Tactics and Final Fantasy V. You pick a class, you're... Just a total putz with that class at first. You're like, Durr, I'm, a, I'm a mage, I can't do anything. And then you learn some magic, and you're like, oh, okay, that's how this class is supposed to work. So while I appreciate that the game does not say, you know, it doesn't say, here's four classes. Learn how to use them, now here's four more. And I imagine the full game will be like that, because that's what Tactics yeah. did, that's what Final Fantasy V did. It but I, I, I honestly think that in this game, it's intuitive enough, and the game itself strikes me that it's tough enough that no matter what you start with, you're going to be weak because you have a class with a crappy weapon, you don't have enough money to buy a good weapon for that class, and you don't have magic if you're a let, caster. So. Let, let me... I want to go back to Steven's argument about Final Fantasy... The, the Final Fantasy VIII demo, which I actually thought that the Final Fantasy VIII demo was terrible, 
And I remember that was like the first moment where I was like, hmm, something doesn't seem right here because I, I agree with you. I don't think that did a very good job of explaining anything. Meanwhile, the Final Fantasy VII demo puts you right into the thick of things. It didn't give you any materia to equip or anything. It just said, okay, here are some magical abilities. Get used to the combat system. See what it's like. And that was all I really needed. And on the one hand, this Bravely Default demo is doing a lot of things. I mean, Stephen, you've said that you've played it for 10 hours, which is awesome. They're giving you something that will carry over to the next game. That part of it's great. I just think that your first exposure to this world... You don't have any sense of what the world is. You don't have any sense of what the characters are. The game is, is doing the absolute worst thing that I I can't stand about video games today where it's explaining thing it's explaining things to you in text, not detailed enough, but also too detailed in a way. Like it's telling you some things that you do need to know while leaving out other things that you don't need to know. Like it's it's bizarre and then it's hitting you over the face with, okay, here is our map system. Here is our character class. Uh, here's our characters. Here is this weird uh, street pass thing. Let's it, it, maybe you know what it maybe is, guys. Maybe I was so ticked off at the fact that just to download this demo took me 20 minutes of getting a new eShop download, a, a firmware update for my 3DS, followed by making a me because now they force you to use the Meverse thing. Maybe that's what it was. And if I give the demo another shot everything will be fine, but just the experience that Nintendo made of me trying to download this demo made me want to cut myself. All right. I was be, so to frustrated. Fair, to be fair, if you had done that sooner, you wouldn't have had to, and I don't necessarily agree with that, but it's frustrating, but it's also part of Nintendo making their online infrastructure less crappy, because now you have a Nintendo ID that your stuff is tied to, and like it sucked that you had to do all that stuff in, to do it. I mean, I guess I already had a me, but I didn't use it for anything. But on the other hand, now you have a Nintendo ID, so it's frustrating. But it's like, would you? Wouldn't you rather do that now and then not have problems with Nintendo? I I, I can't make that argument, Stephen, because the fact that I had an eShop ID and now they made me make a new ID. What's to say that a year from now they don't say, "Hey, here's but you a." Don't, but you don't have an eShop ID. You just had your 3DS. I, I know. I'm now just you saying, have a Nintendo. I'm network. just saying that the whole process of downloading this demo was a total pain in the butt, and then follow it up with. I'm I, I kind of wanted to see like I, I expected this to be like the opening of the game or like this was going to give me a little bit of an idea. I mean, I play RPGs for story and this game was just like, OK, here's the world. Go. And I was like, what, 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 wait a minute. Like, I don't know anything about this game. Like, I, yeah. I only know about the bravely default system. And even guess... that wasn't explained real well. I didn't really know when I should be storing up my turns. I didn't quite have a feel for it. I was like, okay, should I be storing up my... Now my ninja just kind of seems to be destroying everything, so why am I worried about it? I feel like that's something you sort of have to learn by experience. And I I'll agree that it's a bummer that you don't get much story, but it really, I guess, depends on what you want out of a demo. Because for me, a big part of RPG is the story. So if you start spoiling story beats before I even play the game, when I play the game, I'm like, ah, I've already done this. That's true. And so, like, I, 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 I totally that. dig that. I totally dig that. It's a bummer that you don't get more story, but I also kind of like it because now when I buy the game, I'm like, yeah, I know how to play now. I can get right in and dig into the story and not have to, you know, futz around with, uh, oh, how does this work? What do I go over here? I'm like, all right, I know who's what. I know where's what. I can do this and tell me what's happening. Okay, I, I, but I, see I, but I think I your perspective see. is totally valid too. That you know, it's a bummer. You know, it, it'd be like getting a demo of. Sorry for this example, Rob. It'd be like getting a demo of Beyond Two Souls that has nothing to do with Beyond Two Souls. That would be a better game than Beyond Two... No, sorry. Ooh, actually, uh, I, actually, I played that game. That game is awesome. Oh, God, Steven. Okay, whatever. It, it is. It uh, is. So, I, I, you know, it didn't sour me completely on Bravely Default. I think I lost a little bit of interest in the game, but then I'm going, okay, when you get the actual game, you're going to be introduced to the characters. The game's going to take a little bit more time to explain what exactly is going on. Okay, but I you think, won't have to read the gameplay tutorials. True. I, I just think that this demo, it, it, it's kind of like Square Enix was really close to doing something really, really right. And I, I agree with Derek's main point, which is that this demo for like non-RPG people is like a brick to the face of just like, what? Like, you'd think this is a Farmville simulator if you played it for five minutes. I, I don't know if I agree with that degree of extremeness. But I don't, yeah, I, I honestly uh, I'm having a hard time because I, I think that you both make compelling arguments and uh, I win. I, 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 I run the show. I win. Shut up. <laughs> I have very mixed feelings on it in the first place. So I, I totally agree with both what both of you are saying. And uh, 
I, I had a lot of the same feelings too. Like, I think it's, again, what I said initially was that I think that it's a poor demo for showing off what Bravely Default is to people who don't know what it is. But it's also a, a good demo in that it doesn't make you, you're not going to have to retread story. Um, <clears throat> and it's content that isn't in the, the full game, even though I don't think that content is fleshed out or interesting, really. As, so. you know, uh, are you, are you, sorry, I don't want to hurt your point. No, no I, that's it. I'm good. The, the point I, I wanted to make about the demo is that when I went to E3, I was watching a lot of people play Tales of Exelia last year, and they were all running around fighting battles and roaming around the generic world map areas. And I was like, why are people doing this? We all know what a Tales game is. A Tales game is action RPG combat, and you run around, you go to towns. We all know what an RPG is. So for me, when I sat down, I said, all right, let me dig into the menu. What do they got going on here? How can I progress my characters? What options do I have to customize? You know, what is what does the game have in that regard? So I feel like an RPG player who is undoubtedly who's been crying out for this game to get a localization doesn't need you to be like, all right, well, this is the story and here's the bad guy and here's your impetus. They want to know what's the systems like that I'm going to dig into this game for 90 hours with. And I feel like the demo is 100 percent successful at saying, all right, here's our systems. Enjoy. I guess uh, all I can really say is that I feel like they could have done a better job of melding both of those things. Like I said, I wish they would Certainly. have had a, like a small original story that that gave you some neat extra depth to the characters or the the main narrative without retreading. And at the same time, you know, like maybe after that was concluded, like maybe have it be an hour long side story, right? And then once that concludes, say, okay, now here's all the systems. Go have fun, and give you mm -hmm. a couple of additional objectives that don't have any ties to the story like that's i guess that's what i would have wanted but it's a didn't, demo uh, I, I, why am i complaining it's it was free as a you know didn't whatever. etra and odyssey millennium girl do that where they had like some original stuff and then they were like all right you finish the original um, stuff go level up and stuff i'm not sure i know well i know for sure that the demos had that you were able to transfer your save data or to the full game um and i think the only original stuff they really had was there was there were a couple npcs that were like this is a demo lol and yeah <laughs> lol but, yeah, so but but those were also great demos because they let you transfer save data. And that's something that we haven't touched on yet is I know we're wrapping up the conversation about Bravely Default, but it is really cool that you can transfer some portion of your save data to the full game. Obviously not it's not since it is a side story, quote unquote side story, you're not transferring your actual progress, but you do get to transfer uh, your street pass data for the rebuilding side quest as well as but is it, you get to transfer like your friend, your friend list if you've made any friends. The and if you, and if you hit any of the awards in the game, we're like, oh, you did this or you played the demo. You get bonuses of like items and stuff in the full game. So yeah, it's not going to break awesome. your experience, but you're going to jump into the full game knowing how to play, knowing what you want to aim for, and having some additional means to do that. I do really like that, even though this, the bonuses are like have two potions and one ether, and you're like, okay. Well, but, the first one is, but the, the last yeah. couple ones are like, here's some crazy cool weapons and stuff. Okay. Well, that, so I mean, that's that's a neat bonus, as long, and they're not game-breaking or anything, so that's cool. Yeah, they, they basically just cut out grinding in the full game, because anybody who buys this game not expecting to do some grinding, uh, don't. It's, it's, again, Final Fantasy V is a tactics. Part of the fun of those games is grinding to build crazy parties. You're yeah. going to be grinding in this game. But the benefit is, if you press right during battles, you can activate turbo mode. That's true. Oh, I didn't even realize that. that oh, is yeah, dude. Cool. It's, it is baller. Like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know, it would be great when I'm grinding job levels if I could speed up this game. And then I hit right and I was like, oh, I can speed up. And then I hit it again. And I was like, oh, I can make it even faster. Yeah, you can so, go to uh, right speed. And yeah, <laughs> it's you. Grinding is almost eliminated. I mean, like the the chore of grinding is gone. Yeah, you can like, just speed it way the hell up. Yeah, it's a great feature. It's in. We talked about it in Final Fantasy XII International. It's it, it's weird because you don't want to completely eliminate having to fight battles to level. But eliminating the tedium of sitting there watching your characters casting the same spell is a great feature to have. And when I realized I could do that, I was like, oh, I'm going to go level up every class. I think it's and great that it's optional, that, that you can either use it or don't, turn it on or off anytime. Uh, yeah. It's very convenient. You don't have to go into a menu. You just hit right on your control pad, or if you don't want it, hit left. You know, that that's That's exactly what I want out of a feature like that, because... I also don't want that completely eliminated to the point where it's almost as if the game is playing itself. So it, yeah. that's, it's so convenient. I, I feel a little bad using it almost, but it's really convenient. Yeah, because you're still making the choices you'd make. Like, you're still like, oh, I got to pick all my spells and use Brave and Default and all that, which are cool features, by the way. Uh, but, 
yeah, it's 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 nice that you can turn it off because there are times where I just want to watch the party I've built just annihilate enemies. That's fun sometimes. Yep. Hmm. yep. Hmm. I'm I'm still interested in it. You know, I, I I wasn't. You know, that despite Square Enix's best intentions, I didn't say no. I'm not playing this game. I just thought it was a little weird. Um, but I I think you know making a demo can sometimes be really hard. And on the plus side, you're able to carry stuff over. So it, it's one of those things where. I get what they're trying to do. Maybe not the right kind of demo for me, but okay, good job, and I'm probably going to end up getting the game. So is that yeah. fair? I feel like I'm being very yeah. diplomatic. Right no, I, I think that, I think it's a great way to put it. it I, I agree with you guys when I say I don't think it's a demo for everybody. It was a demo that suited me, but you know, I've I've read a lot about Bravely Default, so I jumped in knowing I was like, all right, I know what I'm I know what I'm getting into here. Right, right. And you know, I have the collector's edition pre order, which I rarely do, but. <laughs> I really, really like job systems. Yeah, me too. I did that too. Well, it was like ten bucks more, right? And yeah, it was, it was a like lot nothing. of cool stuff in it. So mm-hmm. yeah, I like Anywho. the soundtrack, which I've reviewed on RPGFan.com. You should read my review of it. I said it's one of the it's one of the few soundtracks that even came close to the awesomeness of Chrono Cross for me, and I that think that's the best soundtrack ever. So the, the battle music is freaking awesome. So good. All right, so, so real quick before we go off topic, the battle music is amazing, and in the full game. When you fight battles and certain characters do better, every character has their own battle theme. So if you start to rock with one character, their version of the battle theme starts, and they're awesome. Yeah, the battle, the, all the music in that game is ridiculous because Revo is ridiculous and awesome. Yeah, the final boss music, it's like four songs that are like 10 minutes each. It's just. Blah. Speaking of which, this is super off topic, and I don't want to go too far into it, but have you heard any of the uh, Dragon Guard 3 stuff yet, Steven? Mm hmm. Freaking insane! It is. It's crazy. Uh, there's there's like one track because I I just listened to a couple of game rip tracks and there is one track where the intro is literally forty five seconds of insane laughter that gets <laughs> gradually more and more distorted until it turns into freaking gabber and it's like doom 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 da 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 da. Okay. So uh, uh, I want to play that game a lot. All right. So I I think Dragon Guard three leads us into a, a good place for discussion about games that we're most anticipating for next year. Oh, very nice, Rob. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the master yeah. of the segue. As I was sitting here looking it, up, I've, I'm sorry I've been so quiet. It's just I I got really excited because we're finally talking about E3, and I just spent like uh, 20 minutes looking up flights. From dude, the... I I am so excited that you're going, and I'm sure Derek is going to go. So we're gonna have a lovely time. Well, I think what I'm going to be able to do is, you know, hey, hey, the kids, the, the the listeners get to hear how we plan this stuff out. If I take a train to Newark, Delaware from 30th Street Station in Philadelphia, I can actually get a round trip flight for $400. That's good because you're way east. Yeah, I am way. I might be the most east. Am I Rob, the most east? Rob, would you say that you're always east? I'm always east. That's a Diablo reference, and you didn't get it, and I'm very upset. upset Always? No, I actually did get it. Always into the East. I got it. It's not a big black mushroom, I don't care. I also uh, reserved my Reaper (laughs) of Souls collector's edition, so. Mm. I I I did it. I am going to to get that, but I'm not going to get the collector's edition because I got the one for Diablo 3, and it was awesome, but. Yeah, I'm I'm splurging a little bit. It was awesome, so you're not getting the other one? Well, it was awesome, but it was $90, and, you know, Diablo 3. It's Diablo 3. I love it, but it's hard to love sometimes. Yeah, oh, no. I love collector's right. editions, but only so, for stuff anywho, that... anywho, anywho. Anywho. So, anywho. So, so we were talking about Dragon Guard 3. I gotta ask, are people really excited for Dragon Guard 3? Right, well, this, uh, I feel like this is like how, how I like Deadly Premonition. That's what I feel like. No. It's like... Derek, before I... Because I, I know you're going to make a different point than me. I agree with you, Rob. I think people are forgetting that Dragon Guard 1 and 2 were awful games. Dragon Guard 1 and 2 had really neat stories, yep, and they were awful. And then people yeah. were like, oh my god, I love the soundtrack for Nier, and it's back in Dragon Guard 3. And I feel like that's the only reason people give a crap about this game. Um, and don't get me wrong, series change all the time. This could very well be an awesome game, especially with Square Enix being on this weird, like, we're going to do things that aren't stupid lately renaissance. Uh, so I'm nice gonna, I am definitely going to check it out, because they've really been impressing me lately. The music is fantastic, which I sort of expected. But I really feel like they intelligently are sort of marketing this game on the whole. Yeah, it's kind of related to Nier. Remember, everybody loved that soundtrack and said it had a cool music. So uh, I, I feel like this game could be terrible, but it's weird and quirky like the first two in Nier. So everyone's like convincing themselves that it's amazing. I think that's very valid. Um, and at the same time, I've watched a bunch of gameplay footage. Uh, I know a couple of people have been streaming it recently. 
So I've been checking out a couple streams of it, and oh, really? Uh, I yeah, just... and I, yeah, and I've been like I stop whenever cutscenes happen because they don't want to be spoiled on stuff. But I've watched quite a bit of gameplay. It doesn't look like it's a phenomenal game by any means, but by any wow, I cannot talk by any means. But it looks like a really solid hack and slash, like kind of a it's kind of a Dynasty Warriors esque game on a much smaller scale. I don't know about much smaller, but reasonably smaller scale. And that you have one person that's really powerful attacking a bunch of uh, mooks and people that, you know, like weak generic enemies. Um, so you're just kind of tossing them around like ragdolls. And then you have the the bosses that are the real meat of the game. So and, and that have really interesting and creative patterns and all that kind of stuff. Because I love I love classic action game bosses that have patterns and you have to learn the patterns and get good at dodging them and all that kind of stuff. So that's, <laughs> Metal that's, Gear Rising. Yeah, exactly. Like that, uh, Devil May Cry, Mega Man, obviously, Castlevania, even though Castlevania games are kind of easy on the whole, at least any of the ones with RPG elements. But that kind of stuff is something that really appeals to me. So from what I've seen of the gameplay, it just seems like it is a solid game of that type. It doesn't seem incredibly innovative necessarily, but the story is so out there and the characters seem really interesting and compelling and the soundtrack is phenomenal because of our listening to a lot of it. Very so fair. It, it seems like, to me... Uh, preemptively i'm gonna say it seems like a really solid eight kind of game like an eight out of ten where it doesn't amaze you in terms of gameplay but the other other elements are so compelling that you can't help but be drawn to it so that, that's the kind of game i expect it to be i i don't know i and i do i do agree that a lot of people are probably hyping it a lot just because of its pedigree and without actually knowing because you're right drake I, at least drake guard one was crap i played yeah, like, it I don't, I'm, I don't know I'm, why but i did yeah, like I remember, I was so excited for that game, and I was like, "This is awful." And like, yeah. Near, I I haven't beaten Near, but I always like Near because of how weird it is, and it's playable ish. Yeah, exactly. Like, it has a really cool story, yep. and so I'm willing to play an okay game if it has a really cool story. I played Xenogears, and hey, whoa, Xenogears Watch is a yourself. mediocre game. Let's be real. It's just got an awesome story. Man, but we we are throwing bombs today all of a sudden. You watch Steven, that. I Steven has just never gotten hate mail and really wants some. No. I no so, but I, I agree about Nier. I think Nier is a thoroughly average video game that has an amazing, like, has other amazing parts that make it way better than it should be. Yeah. And, uh, you know, nothing wrong with that. Like, like I say, the Final Fantasy IX is my favorite one. It's flawed as crap, but I love it. And there's totally nothing wrong with loving a flawed game because they can often be your favorite. You're right. Uh, is, and uh, I don't mean I don't mean to poo-poo on anybody who is excited for Dragon Guard three. Poop talk? <laughs> but like <laughs> I you know, I, I think it will be what people want it to be. So there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's like, not I, I, I think I came off a little too negative at first and I kind of blow in terms of gameplay, I don't think, but Yeah, like it could still be an experience that you remember and really enjoy. I did I did actually uh, because the reason why I said I was I stopped streams whenever cutscenes happen because one time I didn't because curiosity got the best of me and I couldn't look away and it was as insane as I expected it to be. <laughs> so I, I just think I think the game is going to be just freaking crazy and I and I really like that because uh, there's just something about the style and the the world that draws me in a lot because it's very it's hyper violent and super macabre and. Uh, I don't know. It's just it's it's so interesting. I don't know what it is. No, I, I know what you mean. It's like, uh, and that's not that's not me I, normally. Like I, I I don't like hyper violence, but something about this series gets me. That's actually kind of how I feel. With Metal Gear Rising. I, you know, yeah. I don't like hyper violence, but man, that game makes you relish in it. Well, and, and I wasn't trying to throw a bomb out there to say that the game was definitely going to be crap. I was just so surprised by the reaction for Dragon Guard Three because. You know, I, I was kind of in the same boat as Steven. When I played Dragon Guard 1, I was like, oh man, here it goes. I'm going to be on a dragon. This is going to be. You You're like, like, well, I guess the music is awesome. I was like, this is terrible. So I'm. I'm this is like bad Dynasty Warriors. So I'd, I'm like. I, I think one thing to keep in mind is that this is not the same team that made Dragon Guard and Near Cavia. I think they, they shut down, and I. They I, did. I could be wrong. This could have some of the same people involved, but it's not the same team. So, you know, it's kind of just the name and the musical pedigree. I, and I, I'm not I don't know any of the developers. So I'm talking out of my butt here when I say, you know, I don't think it's the same people. I think you're right. Yeah, I know. I know Caviar Caviar did dissolve. So it's it's a different staff 
For Much like part. Nautilus in a ruse, I'm crying. No more Shadow Hearts. That I know. Me, that makes me I know. cry too. Rob would feel that way if he ever played the games. I keep <laughs> trying well. to play it, and it just doesn't. Gra- I don't know what it is. Stop, when I got to stop, the stop. Stop. Move on to the next topic right now. It, okay. All right. All right. All right. Derek, give me another game that you're excited about next year. Go. <laughs> uh, uh, well, things that you don't care about. Trails in the Sky, second chapter. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm uh, just saying. I, I'm excited for that because I like the first one. You've played like an hour of it. I've played like 10 hours of it. Are you sure? Can you remember? Pretty sure. <laughs> Do you yeah. understand how time works? I know how time works. Uh, Don't uh, make fun of me just because I've had a few beverages tonight, okay? Oh, I have too. That's why I'm so sassy. So I would say... Do you want me to give you a bunch? Like Trails, uh, second chapter. Rattle a couple off. Let's Transistor. Let's have some fun. Transistor looks oh, awesome. Me, Transistor me does look pretty good. Me too. It's super fun. I'm legitimately excited for Lightning Returns. I know you guys aren't. Um... No. Uh, what? I, well, I have the Japanese. Oh, not, not you guys. Okay. I take it back. I take it back. Rob isn't. But uh, Rob is um, an automaton. Rob, and... Rob might actually like it. I don't know, man. That game's getting uh, a couple of user reviews have come out, so you gotta gotta take that for what it is. That game's discussed these. uh, There there were a couple. There were like two import reviews that came out. Really, it was just one because it was the same review posted on two sites. Oh, okay. uh, Uh, Ah, yes. Was largely positive, and then they were like five out of ten. Yeah, like the whole review was like, "This is a pretty good game." Five out of ten. Okay, so that's fair. That's fair. I I don't think this game will be for me. I I maybe not. Like the plot is silly. But gameplay-wise, I've watched the vast majority of the game on a stream, and uh, it, it, you know, at this point, you either hate Lightning or you love her, and this isn't going to change that. But gameplay-wise, there is a lot to enjoy in this. Yep. But uh, moving on, because we'll we will have plenty to say about that. We actually have a uh, review copy of that coming. Uh, later this week, as of this recording, I don't know if Go I'll get it, right but I'm. I didn't take it. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm yeah, I'm vying for it because everybody knows I, I'm like one of the few people that cares. But uh, yeah, so lightning returns. Um, let's see, transistor. What else did I say? Trails. SC. Uh, I actually I care about the the next Atelier game, Atelier Esha and Logie, that comes out in March. Um, again, I will probably be one of like two or three people on staff that plays it, but that looks cool. Uh, quick question: um, Esha and Logie. Is that supposed to be a play on the word Esha logs? Uh, it's, I did read somewhere that it is some kind of a, a pun or play on words. Yeah. And I actually, I think it's pronounced Eska. I don't know if they'll. No, I think it might be Eska. I think you're right. I am. Yeah. I, I just, I see it. I look at it and I see Esha, but yeah, Eska. Um, and there's a lot of good, uh, like, I don't know. Are we, we're supposed to get Witcher 3 this year, right? Yeah. Um, I I think. No, actually, I'm not sure. I I don't think it's been officially announced. I I think that they're pushing for 2014. I have a feeling that we're going to get that early 2015. Um, But then again, they did say that. um, No, you know, it might be 2014 because they were saying that Cyberpunk was shooting for 2015. Did did they say that? I don't remember them saying Cyberpunk. They didn't officially say it. It was like hidden in the code of their. Oh, you're right. You're right. They were getting cute. Um, and I remember saying that that was a really long way off because we haven't seen anything about Cyberpunk except for the uh, the trailer. So I think that maybe oh, such excite. Oh, I'm 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 really stoked. And you know the the things that we saw out of the combat revisions in Witcher Two make me really excited for Witcher Three. I think that they they seem they, to have... they know what they got to do. Yeah, I mean I I don't think Witcher Two was necessarily a horrible controlling game, but it was a little little dicey and some of their their decisions were questionable. But they really fixed a lot of it up with their combat revamp. Well, because they listen, that's the thing. They yeah. listen to people who play their games, and who better to tell them how to make them better? Yep, yep. Uh, I would say I'm very excited for a lot of announcements. I think that that's kind of like. With the exception of that game that comes out on March 11th and still doesn't. Say, can have we it. stop? Can we stop beating around the bush and talk about Dark Souls? <laughs> really? Because I've been waiting insane. for a while. Doesn't doesn't Metal Gear Solid Five Ground Zero or not Five? But, you know, Ground Zeroes come out on like March 19th, and then Infamous Second Son. Oh my God. I am getting both of those. But there's something else coming out in March that somebody just knocked it out of my head. But there's there's a lot. Cosmic Star there. Heroin. Uh, that was. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, no, I'm just. I'm just trolling you. First off, enough. unless Metal Gear is coming to PC, I'm not interested. Like They've already I, said they're working on a PC version. No, they, they've said they're thinking about it. I don't think you can show me a news story where Kojima says explicitly that they're doing a PC version. I challenge you on that one, Steven. Well, let's look at this. Konami wants to make more money. Metal Gear is their big franchise and Castlevania. The last Castlevania that came out three years ago just got a PC version. Castlevania 2 is. And Metal Gear Rising just got a great PC port. I would be... Yeah, I think 
I think what they're seeing is that a lot of people are making money on PC, and I think the Japanese developers are starting to push there. I mean, they've they've said that Dark Souls 2 is being made first for PC, and then it's being ported. And so, uh, Square said the same thing about 15 and uh, Cage 3, so... Yeah, so let, let's see what happens there. But, uh, you know, I think it, it's easy for me to say Dark Souls 2 is my most anticipated game. At this point, I don't even think about it, because I'm just like... Yeah, I don't either. It's coming. And when it comes here, it takes over my life, and I'm ready to go. I'm just bummed that we don't have a PC announce, uh, a firm PC date yet, which has me a little nervous. And I'm also bummed because I do want that collector's edition on PC, and apparently you can only get it in Europe right now. That has me really bummed out, but you know what? Whatever. It's Dark Souls 2. I just wish... It, the radio silence on the PC version has me really nervous right now. We're, we're two months away. Yeah, but you know what? Look at uh, Final Fantasy X and X2 HD. They were radio silent on the Vita version forever. And then they were just like, eh, it's coming. Here's all the details on it, like all at uh, once. Yeah. And I think there's something to be said for not telling people stuff before there's anything to tell them. I know. I just would like, if it was coming out in April, I'd want to know it's in April at this point. If it's coming out in May, I'd want to know it's May. I'm starting to get like, okay, this could maybe be coming out on PC a lot later than I was initially hoping, which would really bum me out. It honestly wouldn't surprise me if we had a delay on that game at this point, because remember, like, Dark Souls 2 had, like, a two-week delay. Uh, Dark Souls 1 had, like, a two-week delay or something, like, right at the last minute. Mm. It would not surprise me. And that's also based on the fact that at TGS, they were saying, uh, uh, right before Dark Souls 1 came out at E3, people were, it, things were still not set in stone. They were still kind of screwing around with things about the game. So would not surprise me if that game got a little bit of a delay, like a month. Just throwing that yeah, one out there. I, I don't think that would surprise me either. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm super stoked for it. I, I'm really excited. I think everybody's saying the right things. Apparently, uh, the original Dark Souls 1 director has had way more contact with the game ever since all those news stories came out. That could be PR speak. That could just be people saying, oh, yeah, no, no, he's totally involved. No, 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 totally. Yeah, 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 dude, yeah, dude. Dude, yeah. Hey, I, I look at it this way. I don't care who's involved as long as they get the tenets of the game right. And you don't have to have the original guy involved to do it. They have the original guy involved with episode one, two, and three. Very good point. Uh, so, yeah, that's my most uh, anticipated game. But outside of that, it's it's really just I'm excited for a lot of announcements. I want to hear what's going on with Fallout 4. I want to hear what's going out. Uh, I want to see more of Final Fantasy 15. I don't think we're going to get that this year. It, it's a lot of stuff that is unknown. Like this is going to be the year. Uh, this is why I'm so excited to be going to E3. I feel like the doors are just going to be blown off with next gen consoles. People are going to be like, and here's the stuff you've been waiting for. You're going to see this. You're going to see that. And I want to see a lot more chances with RPGs. And I think that the biggest space we're going to see that is the indie space. Oh yeah. Easy. Yeah. Cause a lot of kickstarted RPGs are coming out this year. Yeah. Uh, well, torment, I think is 2015, but, uh, Wasteland is coming out this year. Um, or Wasteland 2, rather. Mm -hmm. um, Darkest Dungeon. We talked to those guys on the last show. I sure hope that comes out this year. That sounds oh. great. Uh, hyper, I, I keep forgetting the name of it. Hyper something. Hyper Light Drifter. Yeah, that looks awesome. I don't know if that's this year, but uh, I agree. Yeah, um, I, I, I think, think it's November they dated Or not November. Um, they dated it pretty early in the year. I was just looking at this like... Uh, right before we started podcasting, I, I want to say like June or something, but yeah, it's slated to come out this year. I'm and then we have a we we have a preview. I played it at Magfest for uh, Chasm coming. Rob, buy Chasm. You're gonna you're gonna love it. What is uh, it? It's basically a Castlevania style game, um, and it's awesome. Chasm like, I'm coming. It's just called Chasm. Just called Chasm. Chasm. Yeah, uh, they had a they kickstarted it. They got back. They brought it to Magfest. Controls are super tight. Great graphics. Uh, the areas are randomized. The rooms are not. Oh, yeah, you did show me this. I can't, I can't stand the art style. Dude, it's awesome. I, Stop I, hating I know, pixel art. I, no, no, no. I love pixel art, but for whatever reason, like, you, you showed me this game, and then what was the other one? Uh, Valdis on Steam? That one's not Story. that. That's out, and that's not pixel art, and also that game Yeah, but great, I just but... can't stand that art style. Like, between, like, and Dust. I don't like that kind of art style. I don't know what it is. It just doesn't look oh, well, anime. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't look like Dust or Valdis. No, no, yeah, it's it very, looks pixel very art. different. Very uh, Also, I think we might actually see an HD port of Type Zero this year, like a PS Vita, oh PS3 crossplay. Uh, they really want that. Uh, having beaten it, there's no reason that game shouldn't come out here. It's one of the best Final Fantasies I've played in a while. Uh, so bad. You know, 
Ajito is coming out here, so you know, I I'm looking forward. I have to an pers- iPad now. I'm looking forward to Persona Five and Persona Q. I don't know if those are coming out this year. I'm oh yeah, hoping. I totally forgot Q about is. Persona Five. But uh, P Five is going to be Bala. Yeah, uh, it's going to be ridiculous. When does this Chasm game come out? It actually does look kind of cool. So. Sometime this year. Uh, they were they're aiming for summer. Okay, uh, oh. dude. I'm, seriously, I played the demo. I am firmly confident you will find it awesome. I think it is the kind of game you will. Said they go. We're aiming. They go. We're not trying to please everybody. They go. But we're trying to make the game challenging. So it's like the Castlevanias you remember, where it's rewarding when you accomplish something and find something. And I'm like, yeah. oh yes. I uh, think um, to to I think we can throw predictions in here while we're having fun and just kind of kibitzing. Uh, I think we'll get sure, the new nice. what? Good job, host kibitzing. Great I'm, work. I'm, I'm having fun tonight, uh, and I'm really excited because you know four hundred dollars to go to E3 is not too bad. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we're gonna get a Deus Ex announcement. I think that I agree. I think very quickly after Thief is released, I or think maybe gonna... you don't think before. No, I think they're going to... I mean, Thief comes out in a month. Oh, all right. Yeah, so. yeah all right, true. I, I, I think Deus Ex is something they would say for E3, given how big that is now. Because yeah. they made a lot... They, they sold a lot of Deus Ex. Yeah, and I'm I'm really excited to see what those guys do. Playing through Human Revolution again, I mean, that, that really got me more psyched, because I forgot how much I liked that game. I think I kind of... I think I kind of spun out on it, like, trying to play it twice in real rapid succession, like, once for review, and then once just to play around with it. And the PC board had some problems at first like the load times were really bad but they they really fixed that game up and it was really yeah a I, special game not that that was square explicitly but square is really moving to right a lot of the wrongs they've made for a few years and deus ex i think really showed that where you know you got the game for five or ten bucks if you already owned it that was they fixed, awesome they fixed problems there are games by triple a studios <clears throat> battlefield 4 that still don't that are almost unplayable for some people that they've done nothing about and square had that fixed what in like two weeks i think it was right around the time the game came out um because it was for the, the review code was having problems with it but they fixed it up and i i just think that deus ex you know i'm really excited to hear about that we did kind of hear about some idos montreal problems uh they they made a studio that was apparently going to make the next hitman game and that's been killed so that has me a little bit nervous. What do we feel about Square Enix's financials as of late? Uh, well, they haven't said much, but Aye. let's. Their games have been selling better. They've managed expectations. Fourteen blew their expectations out of the water. That's true. And uh, last time I checked, two weeks ago, uh, they are not experiencing what uh, the old public did, which was the, hey, we had a million, a bajillion people subscribing, and then half of them quit. Uh, that does not seem to be the case with 14, probably because it's awesome, unlike Old Public, which is not awesome. Forgive me if you like Old Public. Ouch. Uh, uh, Dave what about, just started crying a little bit. What about... Well, uh, okay, that's gonna... the thing is, one of those games has creativity behind it. One of them has a corporate faceless monster. Ouch. Uh, 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 wait, wait, wait. I'm going to ask some rapid-fire questions about Square Enix, okay? I want, I want yes or no's, okay? No, no, yes, no. All right. I well, agree with that. <laughs> Dragon Quest Ten in America. Uh, that's actually iffy. I feel like if it's going to come here, it's going to be the PC version. I agree. Also, and I, yes. hope that it, I hope that it does, uh, but uh, I'm not sure because it's been a little while since it came out, and they've already they're already readying the first expansion, and we haven't heard a, a damn word. So. Hey, they're making a sequel to Bravely Default, and we're getting that next month. The original the Bravely one. Default, just yeah. to avoid confusion. Yeah, but, but yeah. we're getting we're getting the updated version of the original Bravely Default. I know. So. I, was, I was just avoiding confusion. Uh, Dragon Quest Seven on 3DS. No, but I wish we would. Yeah, I really want to play that. I feel like, <laughs> and I, I, I vote don't care. You don't, Rob. You don't. You do not. No, Dragon Quest wanna... Seven is by far the most inaccessible game in the series, because it is so freaking long. But and they so... fixed up. They they apparently fixed up the whole beginning. They, of the because game. the Dragon Quest Seven. On, I'm sorry, Dragon Warrior Seven on PS One. You don't fight your first battle until you're like seven hours in. Yeah, apparently they fixed that for the 3DS version. All right, well, if like, they I agree with you, but like that. Yeah, but yeah. I no, I like it. I, I never, I never like, I didn't even really make that much progress in it. I think I probably put about 15 hours into it ever. But I, I wish it would come out here because I'd love to give it another chance, and I've become a, a bigger fan of Dragon Quest. I know Steven isn't. Not that that's relevant because I can have my own opinions. So I don't, I, I don't hate Dragon Quest. I nothing it. Can mom and dad stop fighting? Yes. <laughs> Uh, all right. Mommy was gone for a while, so Daddy's been lonely. <laughs> I don't know why Steven's mommy. My God. Uh, yeah, yeah. Final Fantasy 15 in 2014. 
No. no. But I wish it would, again. Actually, wait, wait, wait. I take that back. Maybe. In Japan, possibly Q4. Uh, maybe. I could see a December release in Japan, maybe. And I could not disagree more. I don't think there is a snowball's chance in hell. Of that's that why I said up. maybe. Nope. They, they've showed a lot more of that game than they normally show of their in-progress stuff, though. I, I think by a lot more, you mean just like a really nice-looking video that... I don't know how much of that was gameplay. Well, let's wait and see. I think it, I personally think it was all gameplay. Uh, I'm going to be cautiously optimistic. Well, I think it was... Uh, I think it was all in engine, and I think the parts with a HUD were gameplay for sure. And I mean, they said it was. You know, maybe. You know, I think we're past the age of this is definitely Kill Zone Two. Uh, okay, let's keep going uh, rapid fire with some more stuff. Uh, deep down, utter disappointment. Yes or no? No. I think that game will be disastrous. <laughs> uh, I don't like I don't free really to play. Know. I don't like free to play. Not a fan of free to play. Path of Exile changed my mind a little bit. Uh, Deep Down has a really neat concept. It's Assassin's Creed plus Dark Souls. I hate one of those series. <laughs> so there's a 50% chance that I will love this game. I like Dark Souls. Yeah, I know. It's new. Sure, I sure. just recently played AC4 and loved it. Actually, I did kind of like AC4, but uh, that's neither here nor there. I, really I, 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 I like the concept they're going for with it, and I like the style of combat they're aiming for. I just, I, you know, call me an elitist, whatever you want to call me. I'm, I can't dig the mobile thing, and I always associate mobile with free to play because it's just cheap 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 but this game looks anything but cheap so i don't know i i have i got nothing i don't think it'll be a big disappointment though okay better better than dragon's dogma i think we've already talked about the fact though that free to play games tend to lend themselves to a structure where you cannot progress without dumping money into it and you always hit a wall that or you cannot surmount without yeah without a ridiculous amount of time or money investment anyway go ahead all right, uh, moving away from RPGs just really briefly because I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. Uh, Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2, modern day Dracula walking around science laboratories. Go. Uh, what I the dig. hell? Like, <laughs> you know what? I'm tired of not. I'm tired of not wearing it on my sleeve. I love crazy crap. I do too. And I enjoyed that demo. Uh, there were parts of the demo I didn't like at E3. The combat was super tight. It was gorgeous. Great art design. I liked Lords of Shadow well enough. Uh, Maybe a 7 if I had to give it a number, which I don't like to do. But I thought it was fun. Certainly better than the last few 3D Castlevanias, other than maybe Laments of Innocence. Uh, yeah, I, I will play it for sure. It, I like wackiness. I don't like to be negative or anything, but uh, I, I haven't really played the first one. I played a demo of it, and that's it. And I played the demo of Lords of Shadow 2 at E3 and was severely underwhelmed. Although, again, it was a demo, and I don't want to fully judge the game. Uh, just it, based it on was that. a bad demo. It was a bad demo. I, really? I would say that. Oh, oh really? So, 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 oh, yeah, demos can be. I'm just I, kidding. <laughs> I was just blown away by how different that game looked because I was always like, well, when are they going to show the modern setting stuff? And they didn't just show like him hanging out in like a gothic looking like future. No, he's like full on in science laboratories with stealth kills. And I was like, yeah, what wait, the? That cool wait, that's happening? Yeah, yeah that's, that's so happening. Freaking wacky. It's so cool because like they hinted at that with Ario Sarlo, like it's in the future, and then you were in Castlevania the whole time. So it's like. Yeah, I'm in the future, meaning a couple of the weapons are guns. Really? Yeah, I, I'm all, I, I don't know what to make of this game, but I went from being like, because the problem was I played Lords of Shadow on the PC, which playing that game at a rock solid 60 frames per second was awesome. The only problem was that that game has horrible pacing issues, and a lot of the enemies are cheap as hell. Like, they, they have no wind-up animation, and almost every enemy in that game has a splash attack that I just can't stand. It's really lazy. But the worst... Uh... I don't know if I'd use lazy, but it is annoying. It's very annoying. And the biggest problem with that game is that the two pieces of DLC that they made were god-awful, including, like, this absolutely train wreck of a final battle that is just not fun and goes against everything that you've been doing in the game. So that game, that left a really, really bad taste in my mouth, but then I forget that there were sections of Lords of Shadow 1 that were really awesome. And so... Let's see what they want to do, but I'm with Steven. It looks crazy. Okay, getting back to RPGs. Um, Something, something, question. Dragon Age Inquisition. Is it the Bioware apology that we're all looking for? I think no. it looks really cool. I think it looks, yes, what Derek said. I think it looks cool. I don't think it's the Bioware apology. I think it is, I think the tactical cam is completely uh, lip service because the game, the demo they showed looks like it doesn't need the tactical cam at all. Looks very simplified because... Let's face it, it's an EA game. It has to sell a billion copies to be successful. 
It's got to appeal to a million people. It's going to be advertised at the same kind of crap you saw Dragon Age 2 advertised with. It could be fun. It looks fun. Uh, but I think that a lot of what they're claiming is going to be great about it is lip service. I think it's going to be dumbed down Dragon Age 2 with Skyrim-style world size. Ow. Damn. Well, when I'm when I'm right and we talk about it, I I don't think that's inherently a bad thing. I just I think at this point Bioware it, the burden of the proof is on Bioware because they lied a lot about Mass Effect Three. Like I, and I not not, not like I'd say not, they lied a lot about Dragon Age Two as well. No, I'd agree. And I, you know a lot of people are going to say no conspiracy theorist. Uh, no, they said there's 26 endings in Mass Effect Three. There were not. They were like, they said a lot of stuff that was not true or that was like true based on a certain point of view. Yeah. So, uh, Obi Wan. <laughs> yes. I, uh, I am very skeptical. I will probably play it because I think the demo looks great. I don't think it'll be what they're promising it'll be. Uh, yeah. That's kind of the feeling I got is that while watching that demo, I went, this looks really cool, but I don't think it's Dragon Age, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I think. Dragon Age Origins is a very slow, methodical, point-and-click RPG of, like, setting up tactics and really analyzing the battlefield. Dragon Age 2 was kind of... Not that. It, it, it had punchy combat, but it had terrible level design, and it just lacked a lot of depth. I think they're going more in the action route, which could be a good thing. But I, I kind of agree with Steven that the tactical view just didn't look like it was that... Necessary. It, it didn't look necessary, but... It was kind of cool to see a mage rain down Hellfire, but I also saw that in Dragon Age 2. I yeah. think it's I don't think it's going to be the sequel to Origins. I think it could still be a very good game though. Yeah, exactly. I think it could be a very fun game with good writing that I will enjoy. But do I think it's going to be what people what the people who hated 2 because they wanted it to be Origins will Because Skyrim made a bunch of money Nobody in the industry at AAA can ignore that, and the fact is, it's going to be Skyrim Age. When do we get the Fallout 4 announcement? God, soon, I hope. That was really frustrating. That was really... I mean, the VGX, it felt... That's why the VGX ended up, like, not surprising anyone, because that felt like they were all ready to go. We had that freaking annoying hoax going on. Uh, if I do go to E3, I am going to actually kill John and wear his skin so I can go to the Bethesda booth and He's see their... He's not going to E3 this year. Well, then oh, I am going to kill him and take his skin and go to the Bethesda booth, and I am sitting in on that. Because that also means I get to see my second most anticipated game of the year, The Evil Within. Barbie's First Adventures 3? Yes, that is actually... South no. Park, The Evil Within. Oh. I... Okay, South Park... So first off, I know I'm off topic, but... Good Lord, please let the evil within be good. I will build several churches in your honor if the evil within is good. Because pretty between... much said he wants to make Resident Evil Four too, so it's going to be fine. Between that and the new Alien: Isolation, this could be a really good year for horror. That's a sidebar, but like, I uh, really uh, like the fact that we have two big budget horror titles. That I'd like to sidebar your sidebar and say the last Alien game was so bad it got people sued. That's true. I think they have a lot of damage control to do, but from what they showed, that game looked really good. But then again, we were lied to quite a bit. So bear in mind. Uh, so The Evil Within, somebody said Barbie Horse Adventures, and then somebody brought up, ah, yes, oh, okay. South Park, The Stick of Truth. I think South Park sucks. I'm throwing that out there. I think like that game is going to... show really... or the No, game? I think the game is going to suck. I really um, think that game is going to suck. It looks like... What it looks like to me is the kind of game where because they showed that that gameplay demo, right? It looked so weird. What it, no? What it looks like to me is the kind of game that you think it's going to have all of these interesting mechanics that are built off of specific gameplay segments, um, like how in in the d gameplay demo they showed a thing where uh, it, it's it's I can't remember exactly what happened, but it was like there's somebody in the background, right? So you could throw like a yep, yep. a bomb into the background or whatever. That's something that's specific to that exact point in the game. Uh -huh. They're probably going to have like three of those throughout the whole game, but they're 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 building it up like oh yeah, it's all it's based all around this innovative combat system where your environment can be used to your advantage, and it's like no, that's probably BS. And that's that's me being pessimistic about it, to be honest. But I feel like they're hyping up features that aren't actually going to be relevant or present in the full game. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Eric 100%. I, I feel terrible for asking this, but you're talking about South Park, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, sorry. Oh, you, you forgot what we were talking about? <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, you might that's have been fair. playing the that's right. default demo. I, I, I agree. No, with, I'm not. <laughs> I agree with Derek. From that demo that I saw, I saw something... 
I felt like I was seeing a tech demo. I felt like I was seeing, I, in, in a lot of ways, I felt like it was the original pitch video for Final Fantasy XIII, where I was like, um, I can't quite tell what's going on. Everything kind of seems a little weird. I, I agree 100% with Derek's thing about like that one scene where he threw a rock at a kid outside of combat. That seemed very stilted. And the long development cycle on that game is not a good sign. I think South Park comes out and sucks and sucks hard. I will be so happy if I'm wrong. Let me just be clear on that. If I'm wrong, I will be the first one to eat crow on this show and go, really glad Obsidian pulled it off, but I think that game is going to be a train wreck. I am going to be more middle ground and say that I think it looks neat. Um Maybe it won't blow the doors off everybody, but I think it'll be a solid RPG with South Park stuff in it. Mm. I'm just kind of apathetic about it. I I try not to... My general life philosophy is if there's something that I'm not super interested in, I just kind of say it's not for me. Instead of... I, I'll, I'll criticize stuff, sure, with the intent of trying to analyze and or talk about how it could be improved, but... I, I shy away from generally just being like, oh, this sucks, because I feel like that doesn't actually contribute, contribute anything to anything a conversation, to, yeah. to any discussion whatsoever. So the, I don't really care that much about it. But I mean, it, it could be good if it comes out and it's good. Awesome. But whatever. yeah, that's kind of that. that's honestly how I feel, too. I mean, I'm so, I, you know, my thoughts on certain games are everybody's well known. But at this point, I'm kind of like, OK, if if Steven likes Beyond Two Souls, that's great. I don't see it. But I understand what he's looking for, and that's great that he enjoys it. And I'm not going to be one of these fools that goes online and starts going like, "Really, you like that game?" Pooh. Like, let I'm, me make you feel stupid about your yeah, opinion. No, I'm I'm sorry. Like, people enjoy the games that you like. I'm having a ball with Deadly Premonition, and that game is terrible to play. I want to play that so much. <laughs> it, it's so funny because understand that game. No, okay. So let me explain De- Deadly Prem- Premonition briefly. The RPG gameplay. Podcast. I know, but I I'm going to explain it briefly. The gameplay is terrible. The gameplay is god-awful. You do not play that game for the gameplay. You're going to want to get through the shooting sections as quickly as possible. They are awful. The story seems so bizarre and silly and tongue-in-cheek and the room levels of awful at the start that you're going to have no clue what's going on. Then when the actual murder mystery starts taking over, it actually gets really interesting. Like, you're kind of intrigued by these characters, and you want to learn more about them. And the game starts to pull back on the silliness. And there's still some silliness here and there, but it starts to pull back. And I'm like 12 hours into this game, and I'm totally invested. Uh, have you tried the Sinner Sandwich? No, but I keep looking in my coffee to try to figure out what's going on. Um, <laughs> What? Don't worry about it. There's, just... this, like, there's this vile sandwich they eat in the game called the Sinner Sandwich. Yep. And oh, okay. I forget Here. what's in it, but but a bunch of people made it and you know and ate it and blogged about it and it was. It's fine. it's just a weird game that you have to experience, but don't spend more than ten bucks on it. All right. Before honestly. we go off back to what we actually just supposed to discuss, would I like it, Rob? It just seems goofy as hell. I don't think you will, Stephen. Keep in mind, I... I like Tenchu. Tenchu's busted and stupid, but hilariously awesome. I don't think you'll like it. But it's one of those games that I really wish you'd give it a shot. That tells me you think I might like it, maybe. Maybe, possibly. Okay, moving on. Uh, more. Uh, let's do some crazy, wacky predictions. Um, Man uh, with the dog on the moon, 2014. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> What'd you say? You said man put the dog on the moon. Oh, God. Um, it's a crazy prediction, right? I need something crazy. Uh, I think we find out more about Unsung Story, uh, the the guy who made oh. Tactics Ogre. You asking me, Monsuno? Yeah. yeah. They, just anou- they just announced that it's going to be episodic. Yeah, but I'm I'm. They still haven't said if it's going to be on anything other than iOS, and that really cheeses me off a little bit. I agree. Me yeah. Too. Just, just God, put it on the Vita or something. Please. Yeah, from now on, you know what? Sony's made it easy to develop. I'm not a developer. Saying that totally out of my butt again. <laughs> if you're going to make your game on iOS, just shut up and stop. Put it on Vita so I'll give a crap about it. And I know that's elitist. You can hate me all you want, but I don't want to play a game on my phone or my iPad. I don't have an buttons, iPad. Please. What? I just said buttons, please. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, buttons. Buttons that I don't have to purchase an external controller for. I like tactile feedback what can i say i agree i agree i, li- I like square triangle x and o big dog yep 
do we get any other major I, I feel like if we're gonna get new RPG announcements because we we already know Persona 5's coming Fallout 4 will most likely be announced at E3 that's my prediction right there I feel like we might see some new IP which might be really exciting I, I would like that yeah I feel like we've gotten um I don't want to say super stagnant but at least with the AAA developers there have been really few risks or new IPs as far as RPGs go and that I'm I'm not basing that off of any evidence that I have in front of me. I'm just I'm thinking about it and I can't think of a lot of brand new IPs that came out um over the last year or so. I mean like I don't know why I jumped into my head but there's uh Nippon Ichi did Fairy Fencer F but I don't really care about that. Um, Alert came out 2 years 3 years ago. Oh my god. Yeah, too bad that game tanked. Well, it didn't. It tanked because they spent way too much money on it. But vis-a-vis a new, I that was the wrong use of that. But for, for a new IP, it sold like a couple million or a million or so. So that's that's pretty good for a new IP. They just had stupid high expectations. Yeah, I I would love to see a new IP out of Square Enix um, because they have the potential to do amazing things when they do them well. Uh, so, Lagoon. Uh, nah, I'll pass. But. I would I would love to see either a new IP or a, it's selfish, but I would love to see a new Chrono game that isn't bad. I don't really know how else to phrase that. I, that's, I, just, uh, I don't think that, that, that that's not saying that's not saying Chrono Cross is bad. I love Chrono Trigger and Cross. We've discussed this. I just I want them to put out a new Chrono game, but I don't want it to be like Chrono Mobile Break for iOS. You don't want it to come out and have zippers like no. You, basically, what you're saying is you don't want don't, Tetsuya Nomura to make. I don't it. give a damn about zippers, you people. You guys always bring up the zippers. I don't freaking care. All right, here. I look, I love Kingdom Hearts. I'm excited for 15. Tetsuya Nomura has become a terrible character designer. There's really? too much. Thank it, you. It, it's too fashiony. It's too flash. There's not enough substance, and I don't feel like. All right, if somebody at Square Enix is going to make a new Chrono game, it needs to be Yoshi P, because he understands that substance is more important than style. Yoshi P but he can, he can still do style. Chrono Cross had style, but Chrono Cross was more about heart first, so was Chrono Trigger. And that's why I would never, ever want Tetsuya Nomura or uh, Nojima to be involved with a new Chrono game. Yeah, I, I don't think I'd want him to design Chrono characters. I just It's just not his like, style. Their design is very... Uh, Awful. Uh, what I'm looking for. No, no, no. I'm talking about Chrono style. Like it's very uh, uh, pastoral. It's very, it's subdued. Yeah. Like people look, people look nuts. Like this is spaceman and stuff. But it's all there is a like, block of wood. <laughs> yeah. Like look at look at look at Serge's outfit. Serge's outfit is like a blue dress, basically. <laughs> like it, it's all very like people. You, you know what I'm saying though. Like the design of a character from Kingdom Hearts. It's, or I from think Final Fantasy Post Eight. Don't like, it's whimsical. I think a little bit more so. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. Whim- whimsical, but, like... Did you hear how angry he sounded when he had to admit that? <laughs> it's, Did you hear it's, that? It's, it's practical. Like, look at anybody from a Final Fantasy designed by Nomura or Kingdom Hearts. They look insane. Whereas the Chrono characters just look like they're wearing clothes that have, you know, a design to them. I suppose. Like, they're stylized, but they're not, like... I have a zipper on top of my arm pocket attached to my elbow with my keyblade inside of it with a keychain <laughs> attached to my foot zipper. <laughs> like, or, or like Zidane's leg thing that's like a net like what is that what you mean Titus yes that's exactly what I meant I would never criticize Zidane's design it's wonderful thank you Amana <laughs> welcome <laughs> alright uh, yeah I please god never make another Chrono game like cause I, at this point I just I feel like that would kill me between Indiana Jones, Star Wars, Final Fantasy, it's like my whole childhood's been ruined. Just, just leave Chrono. Final off. Fantasy fourteen is amazing, and the new Star Wars could be excellent. It can't possibly oh my be as bad God. as the last few. No, no. Stop, I wa- getting, stop getting me off topic. No, I watched Into Darkness again. If you take the con stuff out of it, that movie still makes absolutely no sense. But it wasn't written by the people who are writing Star Wars. Yeah, and they're rewriting canon, and apparently we're going to have Han, Leia, and Luke in it as old people to pass the torch. This sounds like a great idea. There's nothing wrong with having old characters in it. Some of the best Star Wars novels had old Han and Leia. I've said, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. You want to know what I want out of Star Wars? I want a completely new time period, and I don't want to see one goddamn lightsaber. I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't disagree with the latter. I want just... Di- there is so much more to that universe. Show me something else. We are way off topic, but that's how I feel. <laughs> that's all right. Stop baiting okay. me with topics and then telling me I can't talk about them. Would you, you like using your position. Would you like to move on to news? Are you ready? 
I, I feel like we all I was need one board we, ready. We all need one big one. Like, uh, okay, let's let, to end this this part and we'll move into news. What's one thing that you're really hoping for this year? Just one, five. Well, uh, okay. Uh, no, no. Yeah, all right. That's fine. One, one thing that that hasn't like been announced or. I don't know, just like one thing, one trend, you know, like something. If you could change gaming this year, what's the one thing you'd want to see? Well, I want The Last Guardian to come out, but that's also that's not a trend, that's just a game. Stop asking for impossible things. Well, I'm sorry. I want a dog on the moon. <laughs> I want a dragon bat. I don't know why I'm fixated on that right now. Uh, I don't know. I can't really think of any trends necessarily. I I want to see some more developers embrace the Vita um, because there's there have been some good games coming out for it, and I think that there's a lot of potential. And by a lot, I mean an incredibly immense amount of potential with uh, PS4 Vita connectivity. As we know, um, remote play is amazing, and I I just want to see more. I I would like to see more games for the Vita in general, but also more utilization of that connectivity to sort of to bring us neat experiences like I really I appreciate the fact that uh, Final Fantasy 14's PS4 version is going to have remote play which I don't know why it wouldn't but you know they confirmed that it would so I just think that it's cool that I could say play FF14 and do some dungeons or whatever and then as the night's winding down I'm like all right I need to get off the computer I can take my Vita over to my bed and just craft for a little while before I go to sleep like I want more unique gaming experiences like that, things that we couldn't do with previous technology, and I want to see more developers trying to innovate. I think uh, I don't have a way I change the industry is going to start happening, and I'm excited about that. Uh, as for what I would really like to have happen this year, this is going to seem very specific, but I would really like it if Kingdom Hearts 2.5, the Birth by Sleep HD, has online play for the multiplayer component because it's incredibly fun. The co-op battles are awesome. And it will functionally render the content useless if you can't do online play because there's no way you'll be able to do local with it. Uh, so I really hope Kingdom Hearts HD 2.5, oh. that Square adds multiplayer, like online connectivity to Birth by Sleep. That would be cool. And that reminds me of something else that I want that doesn't exist. Uh, the Wolf Among Us episode 2? Uh, yes, but that will exist. Thankfully. I, would, I really, really, really want uh, a PS3 Dissidia with online multiplayer. Because holy crap, Dissidia! Hmm. Oh uh, yeah, Dissidia. Was Love amazing. Dissidia. Like uh, something about Dissidia is probably my favorite game on the PSP, and Theater Rhythm is probably my favorite game on the 3DS. Just, not just because they're Final Fantasy games, but I love rhythm games, and I, I would say I really enjoy fighting games. But the fact that Dissidia is a fighting-ish game that has so much fan service and so much good music and such fun gameplay, like. Those games are so original, and I love them so much. I really, really want to see a console Dissidia so bad. Yeah, a new, a new so Dissidia. Later. You should have. It's so important that you say that because oh. uh, I put a, I put like 200 hours on the Japanese version of the first Dissidia and then like another 50 on the English version, and they're so much fun to play with a friend. They're great single player because there's tons of unlockable stuff, and just the combat looks awesome. Like... It's pure fan service, but I'm I can be bought. And if <laughs> if your method of purchasing me is letting Zidane and Kuja fight in HD with that crazy anti gravity nonsense going on at the city, uh, then you succeeded. I like it. I like it. Uh, for me, mine's kind of more of an idea for the games industry, uh, and one that I'm feeling very strong about. The more uh, the more I think about it. I want the games industry to stop nickel and diming me. I really want them to stop nickel and diming me. What do I mean by that? I want them. Yeah, what do you mean by that? No, it, it, it's kind of it, it's several fold. Uh, it gets back to our argument about free to play games. I don't want to play a free to play game that's been designed to screw me up and prevent progress to the point where I need to go out and start purchasing things, booster packs or whatever. I don't want to play games that advertise, okay, Rob, you can do it for this, you could do it right now, and, you know, hey, it'll only cost you 30 cents to get that upgrade for Dead Space 3. You want that? You, you, want, you, want, you want some of that stuff? I, that stuff needs to stuff. The stuff uh, needs to stop. The stuff that I've heard about how disgusting Forza is with that, the Lay's Forza on Xbox One, that's crazy. Oh, yeah, I hear it's pretty rough. That needs to stop. Uh, 
pre-order bonuses. Like the whole, well, if you pre-order from Best Buy, you get this hat. But if you pre-order uh, from yeah. EB Games, you get that. this gun. Or if you pre-order from Amazon, you get this level. Stop that. Yes, stop that. Stop yeah, that. I'm a I would love and that not. hurts me. Because there's there's no way that you can get all of that unless you buy that game at all those places, yep. which is absurd because they're not worth that. Yep. So and you're, also, you're never going to get the complete, quote-unquote, complete experience, you know? I, I also wanted to uh, immediately cut off the counter-argument to that, which is, well, they always end up releasing it eventually for free. I don't want it ten months later when I'm never going to play that game exactly. again. Exactly, exactly. I want it now, so just stop. And then the last part is something that, you know, I, I think we had a lot, of, and Jim Sterling talked about it this week, so I'm not doing anything special here, and I am kind of parroting his point. Um, we saw a lot of early success with uh, alpha builds of games and incomplete games and being able to buy games like Minecraft that weren't quite ready to play yet. I think it's gotten to a level of disgusting when you look on Steam and you see 85 pages worth of games that you can play now by buying it now, but it's not really ready and it's not really complete. And, you know, there's so many aspects to it, but we'll take your money right now. That we, we saw how bad that was with the War Z with a game that was released on Steam, but people yeah. had to get refunds. I that agree. It needs to stop. That can be done badly, but it can also be done well. That's not fair to the people who use it reasonably. Starbound is a fantastic game with a crap load of stuff to do no, with I, it. I agree with you. I agree with so, you. But what I'm saying is that if the AAA game development studios have a real problem with manufacturing games and putting microtransactions in and stifling creativity, the indie developers are starting to take a little bit of advantage of, hey, we can put our game out there and it's not feature complete yet, but we'll gladly take your money. The fact that Wasteland 2 is $60 on Steam right now, even though when the game comes out, it's going to be 20 but they have the balls to put that game out there for 60 bucks and potentially scam people out of money for a game that is not complete yet that will be $20 when it comes out that's not right and that kind of crap could really screw up indie development and these guys need to be very careful of that if AAA development has a problem with stifling creativity then indie development needs to stop taking advantage of people that needs to cut it out. I agree with you, Steven. Some guys are doing it really, really well. I thought Clay did an awesome job. Clee, Clay, whatever you want to call it. I thought they did an awesome job with Don't Starve, and they were very upfront with what you're what they're doing. But there's a lot of crap on Steam right now, and eventually that could choke you out. The, way, the reason we had the video game crash back in the 1980s was because that there was a ton of crap games out there, and stupid people didn't know what they were buying. That could happen again, and the indie developers need to be very careful of that. I I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get like super serious there, but I'm just really, really pissed off about it. I'm really pissed off that like some some kid that maybe sees a game and they're like, hey, this looks really interesting. Maybe they're not reading the fine print or in the forums that that game's not complete. I'm not really happy. I, I don't agree with that. Uh, buyer beware, dude. Like To an extent, I don't agree with that philosophy, but... You, the internet is available for you. Don't buy a video game that is that has a giant sticker on it that says, I'm not done yet. And then be like, I didn't know what I was getting into. You can easily go to the board for that game and say, hey, how far along is this? Should I buy it now or should I buy it later? Because some games are like Starbound where the game is, you know, you can play it. There's tons of stuff to do, but there's going to be adding more. And some games are like, yeah, core functions aren't in here yet. So you're really playing an alpha. I know. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying I think we need to be careful here. I really, really do, because that can that can destroy a lot of goodwill that you've created with the indie development movement. And I, I just think it's a little sick right now. And I'm just, you know, let wait until your game's more feature complete. You know, put your game out there when you're proud of it, when you're ready to go. And there is something to be said for seeing how a game develops. I think that that's also a cool, cool idea, too. But I just... You know, something about this really makes me nervous, and I think it could end up really hurting the industry. That's that's just that's just me. Stop nickel and diming me. Stop nickel and diming. I'm me. sick of that too. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Okay. News. Okay. 
Well, uh, the last time we put out a podcast, it was, I think, it was mid-December. I want to say the date was like the 18th or yeah, 16th we're not, or so. I'm not doing a good so, job of keeping us regular. I, I apologize for that. Yeah, it was No, it was the You say to the past. guy that hasn't posted a music podcast in two months. Well, sure. it was the holiday season. We were all busy. And, and I was hilariously many ill. Many of so. us were away. Yeah, Stephen was not hilariously ill because I do not take joy in Stephen's pain. But... So it's it been a little painful. while. Um, let's see. So last month, uh, they did release... Uh, I'm sorry. Rather, they announced an official release date for Professor Layton versus Ace Attorney. It's going to be coming out on March 28th in Europe. And to be honest, I'm not sure if they've announced an official U.S. date for it in the interim. I don't think they have. But I wouldn't be surprised to see it around then. Although March is so absurdly jam-packed with game releases that I don't want it to come out in March because I want that game, but I don't want it to be overshadowed by everything else ever because everything else ever is already coming out that month. Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls yeah, 2. Dark Souls 2 is pretty much everything else ever. Nope. And in addition to that, uh, I'm just kidding. Well, a little bit. I will destroy uh, you! I know. A uh, new Ace Attorney game is already in development, which is really awesome because, really? yeah, I think... I. I seem to remember them saying, well, we want to make more, but it depends on how well Ace Attorney 5 does. Apparently it did well enough in Japan and out here that they're already working uh, on the next title. So that's really cool. I, the Ace Attorney series is so good, and Ace Attorney 5 was one of the best yet. I wouldn't say it was the very best, but I'd, I'd probably say it was the second best. Uh, excellent, excellent game. So I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully it comes out here based on how well Ace Attorney 5 did. So... Uh, on the PS4 side of things, Final Fantasy XIV is slated for a, I think it's a March release, but the beta for that is going to be starting on uh, February 22nd for PS4. So if you are interested in that, you will get uh, access to the beta. You don't even need PlayStation Plus to get in. All you need to do is have a PS4. So uh, you can see why we named that our game of the year if you play it or you think we're insane, I know a lot of people voiced their dissent. And, they uh, not, said that because it was an MMO. Not sorry, honestly, because fan, uh, Final Fantasy XIV is a really good game, and it's absolutely worthy of the praise that we gave it. And I stand by it. So, I do too. Uh, 5PB, also known as Mages, the development studio that made the games Chaos Head and Steins Gate, has announced their latest visual novel. It has an insane name. It's called Cadence Fermata Accord Fortissimo. Excuse me? And... Yeah, think about that one. Musical. I, I can't. So we don't really know anything about it. It's It has something to do... This is what the news article says. The story has something to do with battles between transcendent theosophy and mythological creation. <laughs> what? So, well, the thing, I, the thing about Japan. 5TV is they make games that are insane, but everything within the context of the story and the, the setup is always really, really interesting. Uh, we haven't gotten robotics notes here. Well, I actually, I, Steins Gate, the game is coming out here really soon, the English version for PC. We did, never got Chaos Head, as far as I'm aware. But the they made animes for both Chaos Head and Steins Gate. I've seen both of them, and they're both crazy, but get really interesting, especially after the halfway point. Their pedigree seems to be creating really obnoxious, unlikable main characters that turn into really likable main characters. Like Luke from Tales of like the Abyss. Luke. Yep, Luke is the first person I always think of. So they, the only characters they revealed for this are three uh, girl characters. I don't know if any of them are the protagonist, but... Is Grill. I'm, is Grill. I'm, I'm just interested to see how it goes. Uh, Robotics Notes, the anime, is coming out here soon. So if you like visual novels at all, I would really highly recommend checking into them. I, like I said, Steins Gate is coming out here soon. And if you don't want to play them, there are at least anime adaptations of uh, all three of those. Chaos Head, Steins Gate, Robotics Notes. They're all really, really interesting stories. So uh, hopefully that game comes here. They're cool. And finally, the Saga series is uh, coming up on its 15th? Um, I'm sorry, 25th anniversary uh, this year. So December of 2014 marks 25 years since the first Saga game came out. Those do include the games that were marketed or rather released in the U.S. as Final Fantasy Legend 1, 2, and 3. Those were actually, a, I don't know if they were called Romancing Saga in Japan or just Saga. But uh, yeah, so the Saga series is turning 25 this year. So the Saga series creator is teasing that they do have some new developments in mind. So That's I exciting. Yeah, I do hope that more things happen. I think Saga is kind of an underrated series that has 
it has some really cool games. Uh, Saga is like it's so uneven. Like there are some games that are really really interesting and some games that are just crap like Unlimited Saga. Although Unlimited Saga I'm one of like probably three people in the universe. I'm not trying to be a hipster about it. I just I think that Unlimited Saga is a really fascinating game. I don't think it's a great game, but I'm I was so hyped for it before it came out. I think it has great music and cool art and I just I feel like there is it's possible to get enjoyment out of that game. But but yeah, like this I played so much Saga Frontier 1 when I was a kid. It was one of my go-to games on the PS1 and I poured hundreds of hours into it and never be I beat it with like two people maybe because it's hard as crap. But yeah, so it would yeah, be really cool to see some new Saga stuff. I, I'd love to see a next gen Saga game of some kind, although I I can't see them making like a PS4 Saga game. If anything, I feel like they'll make a 3DS. Yeah, like probably like a 3DS game. Um, they made. I remember there was a trademark uh, last year or the year before for I want to say it was Emperor Saga, some kind of mobile. It was like a MOBA card game, of course. Or not MOBA. What what do they call this? Um, MOBA game. Player online battle arena. No, not those. Yeah, like the the mobile game, the mobile gaming Japan sub hybrid thing. Like the ones where they have like Final Fantasy Airborne Brigade, where they have annoying time locked features. Like come back tomorrow and you'll have ten energy points to play this game where you click the thing. So anyway, new saga game uh, possibly coming out this year or at least being announced this year. So that would be cool. And uh, that's all I have for news today. All right. Wasn't even. It was a sudden stop, but I think we're okay. No, that's all I've got. Yep. Uh, so on the Steam sale, I bought like how many Ease games did I buy? I bought Ease One, Two, <laughs> Origin, and the Oath and Felgana because they were like ten dollars. Yay! I'm gonna start off with the Ease Origins. Am I? Am uh, I gonna, am I gonna I, like it? I wouldn't. It's really tough to say. I feel like I probably change my advice whenever I give this advice. Because I feel like East 1 and 2 are super archaic, but they're really solid games. You just have to know exactly what to expect when you play them. Mm-hmm. But I think Oath and Felgana is the most well-rounded East game and probably the best introduction to the series in terms of like mechanics. So mm-hmm. if you play that and you like it, you'll like all the rest. Like, okay. guaranteed. Okay. So, and, okay. and it's standalone in terms of plot. And yeah, that's can, kind it of also, It also won't take up too much of your time. You can beat it in like five hours with each character. Oh it's, really? No, that's yeah, that's origin. We're oh, sorry, about... yeah, origin. Oh, origin is fun. I think Rob would like it. It doesn't waste your time. It's it's just I, a game. I love, yeah, I love origin. I love origin also. I, I the only reason why I would recommend Oath first is because you actually do get some interesting plot connections between uh, East One and Two and Origin. Str- I would say stronger. There's stronger plot threads that connect the two of those than any other game in the series hmm. or games in the series. So it's worth getting that extra plot out of them because I think it's fascinating. But in how, terms of sh- gameplay, you can't go wrong with Oath or Origin. How long are the games? Like that, I think that's one of the, the things that I'm like a little, you know. Oath, it, none Oath of them are very like, long. Like 8 to 12 hours. Oh, um, so they're not massive games. Yeah, Origin has three characters. Um, the first two characters will probably take you like 5 to 7 apiece, and the third character will take you like 10. If I decide and to do them. If you decide to do it. But it's that totally... And the, thir- the third character is by far the most interesting, though. Yeah. yeah. It's And he adds a ton of plot. Oh, spoiler. It's a he. Okay. okay. So, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested to try it, actually. Uh, you know, it was so cheap on Steam sale. God, there were so many good games on Steam sale, but I think I've finally reached a saturation point. But, yeah, I think that that's, that's kind of what I'm feeling right now. And, and Stephen was saying that it is such, like, an action-heavy series that doesn't waste your time that it might be right up my alley. Yeah, it's. I, I think, like, I've warmed a little bit. Like, I reviewed his Origin. I said it was okay, like, pretty good. It's it's great for what it is. It's very arcade-y. Uh, it, it's, it can be exhausting because it's literally like, all right, you beat the insane boss. Next level, go. Uh, there's, like, no exploration. There's no, like, go talk to people in town. There's, like, yeah, there's five people you can talk to at any given time. Get back into the dungeon and kill stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, fun game, but... Um, Felgana is more RPG-ish. Okay. Yep. Well, I will try to play those as soon as I finish up Deadly Premonition. Uh, did you hear that, Zach? I agreed that I'm going to play Ease. Zach what? who? 
Sorry, you, dude, I, you just have to play Deadly Premonition and you'll understand it. Gotcha. So uh, thanks, everybody, for listening to the podcast. Uh, as always, send us uh, likes and reviews on iTunes. And also make sure to post on the thread if you guys have any questions for us, anything that you want us to bring up. Uh, can't think about what the next game we're probably going to end up talking about is going to be. It's January, uh, so well, Lightning Returns oh, comes out, yeah, so we'll probably have that. Say, we'll have that, yep. All right, all right. So, uh, and that is Steven cutting apart. Bosses. Steven literally just tweeted two screenshots from Metal Gear Rising, like, as we're podcasting. <laughs> well, because one of them is me wearing a mariachi costume, which I how promise. How do you multitask like this? I don't understand. <laughs> I'll understand how he does it, ladies and gentlemen. All right. I also just added stuff to my village of Bravely Default, but let's all not. Right, all right, all right, all right. This. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening, and stay tuned for the next episode. I'm going for another beer. Bye, guys. Thanks <laughs> for listening. Good. Also, uh, cross-promotion. There is a new music podcast coming very soon, I promise. I was away on vacation and ill and also just wanted to relax. But it's coming very soon, and it's going to be awesome. All right. That's the official end of the podcast. <laughs> See you. See you.